Yo, oh, what's up guys and welcome back to Pokemon Showdown. Today we're going to be hitting up the uh, OU Suspect Ladder for some more Hoopa Suspect Test Laddering. Now I want to give a shout out to uh, Chao Toshio who actually passed me the background that I'm using. It's of the Super Saiyan 3 uh, Infernape that was a part of the um, Pokemon Showdown April Fools, you know, little joke they did. And uh, Chao Toshio is actually the original maker of this um, and he contacted me, he's like, yo, bro, I have this if you want to see it. This is the original that I made back, way back in the day for the original prank. So I'm talking years, probably back during Diamond and Pearl. Um, so it was really cool for him to hit me up, and I do appreciate that. I wish this did it justice. I wish I could get it in to look clearer and better because, like, look how nice it looks right here. This definitely doesn't do it justice. But um, I also want to give a, a shout out to Sleeps Jerusalem. I was playing him in Unrated Battle Factory and he said he liked my videos. So I figured might as well give him a shout out. So we're going to be using this, uh, you know, shout out to him. I appreciate anybody who watches my videos. We're going to be using this um, this Jambad team. And I do apologize also for the border around it. I'm recording on Google Chrome. I usually record on Firefox. Um, but right now I'm recording on Google Chrome just because... Uh, my Firefox isn't opening up for some reason. I'll just restart my computer and do it later. But I'm also waiting for Shofu to give me the uh, Nuzlocke part so I can edit. He said 10 more minutes. Okay. So, in any case, uh, we're using an old Beedrill team that my boy Jam made. Really fun. My opponent has a really cool team with a spin blocker uh, as of. I like it. I actually like it a lot. Um, I'm a man, so I'm going to lead off with Beedrill. And uh, I'm going to U-turn right off the bat on his as of Stealth Rock. Like, I'm a man, so I'm going to do this. Even though this six his entire team. But I'm a man. I should just let off with my Tornadus and taunt at him. But I'm a man, so we're going to do this right now. We're going to Mega Evolve and uh, you turn around the back. Call me uh, <laughs> High Impulse. I don't care about my Beedrill. <laughs> Anybody who um, watches me would know what that's about. But yeah, I'm a man. I'm going to predict him. <sighs> I'm not that much of a man. Am I a man? I mean, okay, fine. Let me not go for Protect. Let me not be a man right here. I'm just going to Mega Evolve and Protect. Because in case he goes for Psychic or something, he's probably just going to go for Rocks. Yeah, I should have been a man. Um, but I can U-turn it out of there into my Klefki. I'm sorry guys, I wasn't a man. I was preaching about it, but I wasn't... I didn't practice what I preached. But we can U-turn it out of there, bring him down to a Sash. Probably going to Side Strike or something. I don't know if they run Fire Blast too much anymore. I know they run Taunt, but I can go out to my Klefki right here. On the knockoff, and uh... What I'm actually going to do is Spike Up before anything, because I want to break Breloom's Sash. I'm pretty sure his Brayling does have a Focus Ash, so I do want to break that. And I want to get up the Spike uh, as of my Explode. It does have Knock Off, so I'm expecting it to be Stealth Rock, Knock Off, Taunt, and then maybe Boom. Um, it could also have... What's that ability? Uh, what's that move? Skill Swap. That allows it to Stealth Rock up on Sableye. Though he's not too worried about Sableye, because, I, I mean, for the most part, Halucha can sub SD, uh, Volcarota can Quiver, and even Hoopa, a uh, regular, can be threatening towards it. Speaking of which, Hoopa is actually a really big threat. I do need to save my Klefki, but at the same time, with this Spike Up and the no fear of a Focus Sash on Breloom, like, I'll be good. So he goes right out to Volcarona. I, I'm, I'm clicking T-Wave. Even if it's Lumberry, I cannot risk that, so... I'm going to kick T-Wave as uh, Volcarona is going to come out. And my guy is going to uh, forfeit because he got full paired right there. I mean, I could have dealt with it. I had Garch on the phase it out. I had Tornadus to hit a Hurricane, hopefully. Poison Jab, Starmie to hit Hydro Pump and things like that. So really unfortunate, I guess, that he forfeited right there. But let us look for another game. Why am I taking Jamvad's accent? So we are low on the ladder. So we got Mono Bug. I haven't played it. Oh, have fun, bro. I haven't played in a little while since I actually last recorded, which is why I'm, I am I tend to play this on camera because I've been doing Road to Top 10 and you, you guys should know about that. Um, well, I hope you know about that. <laughs> but uh, this guy has Mono Bug and Sticky Web, which is actually a threat now that I think about it. Uh, this is going to be a pain for me to spin, so I'm actually just going to lead off with Starmie. I should have HP Fire on the Starmie. Nope. But I don't, I don't necessarily need it. I don't know if he's Scarf Durant, to be honest. The way he lead off, he let off with it, I think he is. I can switch on to my physically defensive Garchomp, which pretty much six his entire team. He insurance me. So, okay. Well, now we're going to get up our rocks because... <laughs> he can't do anything for that move. That's actually hilarious. I can go into my Tornadus, though, and take any one hit as he goes for Iron Head. And now, um, even though he did crit me, we know he's locked into that move for one more turn. So, I can attempt to hit a Hurricane. If I don't hit it, I go out to Garchomp. If we do hit it, we knock him out. So... Um, that guy ends up forfeiting. Nice. Get his points. I'll take that as Pinsir is going to come out. Um, don't want to go directly into Garchomp. I'd rather go out into Klefki and Thunder Wave, to be honest. As he quick attacks in regular form, probably trying to get a Moxie boost. I don't even think that would have knocked me out, to be honest, with the range I was at. So I'm going to go for T-Wave. 
At the same time, we do live in Earthquake, so I kind of want to go for Spike. But then again, if he goes Garbantula, I have to go directly into my Starmie anyway. So, uh, Spike doesn't necessarily help too much, I guess. Yeah, there's no point in not going for Thunder Wave right here. As he stays in with his Pinsir, I guess he's really trying to get a Moxie boost, and I keep getting those... Why is this called the Strategist? What a liar. <laughs> Jam, you're just clicking T-Wave. Don't think it's all... Don't be preaching about this. Um, so... He starts SDing up. I don't mind that too much because, I mean, a few of my mods can take his hits anyway. I can go for Flash Cannon. It looks to be a 2 KO as he gets full parrot again. So this is why T-Wave is broken. I don't know why Jam called it the strategist. Uh, the next one won't be able to knock him out. He actually chooses to go for Quick Attack over um, attacking me, not realizing how to boost when he mega it. So I guess that's his mistake because this also gives me the opportunity to uh, pretty much Thunder Wave something else. Like, I can't say anything. Thunder Wave is top 5 move in the game for the reason. For this reason specifically. Not only slowing you down, but also messing you up but yeah uh scissor i think is the biggest threat i'm not too worried about vocal run unless it's hp ice lumberry uh scissor ends up coming up but i mean i have my guard chomp which is at full hp i'm tank chomp this team's all around counter to tornadus bisharp and lopany as everybody's and uh, what i can do is just fire blast right here as he is gonna go for bp it's not even a 2 ako if he went for bug bite and i missed fire blast it could have been more scary as we do miss fire blast however i cannot go for earthly because he went for bp right there as the next one is not going to be able to knock me out. Even if he did crit me or something, I had Starmie to revenge kill him. As we're able to knock him out with the Earthquake, that is very nice. We still have Klefki in the back to Thunder Wave. Volcarona is going to come in like at less than 50%. I'm going to Dragon Tail this thing just in case he tries to Quiver Dance up. As he goes for Sleep Powder. And uh, what I can do is go right out into my uh, Klefki and Thunder Wave right off the bat. Because these things are usually Focus Sash. At least in the... Um, the tier that I play. I'm surprised he's not going to be Alvantula on the Thunder Wave. <laughs> We're still getting full pairs. Which is hilarious. Uh, well, unfortunate for him, but hilarious in general. So, I could just flash cannon. I was thinking about switching it to Kira. I might even get a crit. Oh my god. The strat the quote unquote strategist is putting in so much work for no reason. Now, if he goes Volcarona, Rona, my best play is kicking Thunder Wave 100%. Um, because. After Stealth Rock and Spike, he's in range of Poison Jab from my Beedrill. No matter what he does, if he goes Galvantula, I'm hard switching directly into my Star uh, Starmie because with Sticky Web up, with Sticky Web up, I can potentially lose to Volcarona. So, yeah, he goes Galvantula. Uh, the hazards break any potential Sash, and I'm going hard into my Starmie. I don't care if I'm switching in a uh, Water type into an Electric type. It's thinking about the long term game right here because if he gets up Sticky Web, I mean, I died to Thunder, yes, but if he got up Sticky Web, I pretty much lost uh, right there. So I'll be able to go out to B Joe, and my best play is protecting. Protect um, pretty much takes away the turn of him potentially paralyzing me with Thunder. So I go for Protect even if he goes for Sticky Web, I don't care. I actually goes for Thunder Wave, so that's even better that I went for Protect right there. And we can knock him out with the Poison Jab, and uh, Volcal Runner will come out after taking, you know, the hazards and all that, and it will straight go down. It will go down to the... Look at that. Poor Volcal Runner getting nuked upon entry. He has a Citrus Berry. That's not going to be enough. He said G. I know he means GG. I... Yo, Thunder Wave is putting in so much work right here. GG, dude. Let's look for another battle. All right, so we got, um... This guy is dual dog, which is pretty cool. Definitely he wants to wear down my Garchomp. Doesn't have good switchings for my Kirin Black, which is why I'm going to lead off with it. He actually leads off with Raikou, which is great because his Ice Resist is his Entei, which means that I can actually afford... To, I have no reason not to actually go for Ice Beam right here. Because at best he's going to Volt Switch out. I don't know if he'd go Entei because Earth Power, so I'm actually going to go for Ice Beam just in case he wants to go out to Landorus on a protected Earth Power. Yep, as we're actually able to catch that Landorus. Nice. Goes clean down. No Stealth Rock for my opponent. As um, Landorus is great being gone because Landorus is actually a threat also for Beedrill. Uh, now, of course, Beedrill is checked by Entei's Extreme Speed, but he goes Heracross, which I do outspeed. I kind of want to Ice Beam it, but at the same time, I don't really want to. Hmm. Close combat. Uh, I want to do damage to him though, so Beedro knocks him out and gets the Mega. Yeah, I like that. So I'm actually just going to go for Ice Beam. I am faster, so I'll get off this damage. That way Beedro comes in after and knocks him out uh, 100%. Actually, why go Beedro when I can actually go out into my Starmie um, and knock something out with Psy Shock? He has no switches to Analytic Psy Shock. Knocks this thing out. will knock out Rose Raid, Gengar. Uh, Entei would take like 10 million. Even AV Raikou is not going to appreciate this, so... And, it, and if Raikou takes any damage at all, like it does right now, I can just go directly into my Torn and knock him out. So look at that damage. Uh, I'm not going to risk the speed tie. I'm also thinking he'd go for HP Ice, but I'm going Clef Key regardless so I can get up a spike. 
uh, as he goes right for Thunderbolt. Again, that's fine. Uh, afterward, after this spike, I pretty much break a potential Focus Sash on Rose Raid. I get off damage on him. I'm not too worried about his team. Uh, the hazards are really going to be helping me wear down that Entei again with Rocky Helmet and stuff like that. And at the same time, Raikou can't come back in. So uh, at this point, I'm going to go out into my Beedrill and just protect. I don't want to risk him being Scarf Raikou and knocking out my uh, my Tornadus when Scarf Raikou does not knock out my Beedrill. So he isn't Scarf, obviously, as you can tell right there as uh, I can just go right for Poison Jab and knock him out. Uh, the reason I'm going for Poison Jab over U-Turn is actually, do I have a reason? No, I'm thinking about it twice. Because if I go for Poison Jab, then Gengar gets to come in. I'd rather go for U-Turn right here as he goes Entei. So that's even better for me um, as I will be able to get on my Stealth Rock. Oh my God, look at Entei. If Entei touches my, if Entei touches my Garchomp, it's not going to do crap to me. And this thing has no purpose on the team besides walling Entei. So yeah, I will definitely get on my rocks right here as he goes for Sacred Fire, gets the burn. Um, however, at this point, I don't think he'd stay in, but I'm gonna go for, see, I'm thinking about going out to Starmie, but there's no point because Starmie wins anyway by clicking Side Shock three times. So I'll just go for Dragon Tail right here as um, he does stay in it um, to go for Sacred Fire. But he, if he doesn't go down to Hazards, he will almost go down anyway. Uh, and Beedrill pretty much wins the game. So uh, I'm gonna save My Garchomp, actually, because even though Beedrill wins the game, I don't... I want to save it for Extreme Speed Spam. How much is this going to take? 25%? What was it, 18? No, 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 no. Is it 25 plus 18? I think the second spike is... Okay, the first spike is 12, so the next spike is 6, I think. So, is that how it is? Entei should go down to Hazards, right? It should. Yeah, 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 it should. Okay, it should. I'm, I think I'm right. <laughs> I think that's... I, I, I'm sorry guys, I'm tired, and when I'm tired, my, I don't think right, oh, that didn't even knock me out. <laughs> As we're able to knock out here, <laughs> that's actually hilarious. And what I can do is just go right out into my um, Starmie. The only thing we're scared of is actually him critting us. Many, many times. That's the only thing we're scared of, or being like Scarf Gengar. Uh, so alternatively, maybe Torn is the play over Starmie, because if Torn gets weakened, at least Starmie can take an extreme speed from Entei. Yeah. No, I'll go, I'll go, sorry man, I'm pretty sure Entei, I'm pretty sure Entei goes down to Hazards. Pretty positive. Yeah, okay, I was right. I don't know why I was thinking otherwise, guys. I, I like, I know what they do. I just, sometimes I doubt myself when I'm in a situation where I pretty much win the game. Actually, a lot of times I do that. Uh, <laughs> I think of like some weird things, like last time I was thinking about like Magnet Rise, um... Like a random Magnet Rise, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Infernape. I'm gonna lead off a Starmie because his best lead is Mammal Swine. It's more than likely the Sash Mammal, and I can Hydro Pump into Rapid Spin if he chooses to go for Rocks. He doesn't have a switch into this. Analytic Hydro Pump will pretty much knock out everything. Uh, Starmie does beat his team, yes, but preventing Rocks is the bigger thing to do as he goes for Endeavor. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an Ice type that can pretty much take him on. Um... Let's go, let's go cure him. Let's make an aggressive play and predict his Ice Shark. Yeah. And now what I can do is I am faster and I can just go right for Ice Beam. Ice Beam pretty much gets a kill right now. Uh, knocking out Mammal's nice. I'll just, alternatively, I could just go for Earth Power because Earth Power hits Magna Zone. Um, just in case he wanted to be a bit <laughs> cheeky and go out to that uh, as it has Focus Sash. That doesn't even matter. I can follow it up with an Ice Beam. It was a Focus Sash. Straight up Focus Sash Magna Zone. So Magna Zone goes down. That's nice. Uh, we can get up Rocks. As well, a mammoth one is still a threat, though. I would love to have beaten that, but the Punisher is inside, guys, literally inside. And if Latios comes out, I go out to Klefki and I click Flash Cannon, preventing mammoth one from coming out. My Klefki actually puts in a lot of work now, walling three dragons, which is exactly what a fairy type is supposed to do. So I can respect that. Uh, he goes out into Bisharp, however, I'm gonna go out into my um, Garchomp on the Sucker. And I see. I want to go for South Rock, but Mammal Swine is just an obvious play, so I'm gonna go for Earthquake as he goes Mammal Swine. Yep. So I'm glad I didn't go for that because if he went Latios, that would have been a great play on his part. Uh, really aggressive and great, but I think Stealth Rock was just that was just a better play for me. 110%. As the Haxorus is gonna come out, and good lord, this thing is a threat. We're just gonna dragon tail. We can't risk him dragon dancing up. He wins if he dragon if he's dragon dance alum. So I definitely understand why I made my play. Yeah, if he was dragon dance alum, I lost the game right there. 
100%. So I had to make that play, guys. So we go clef key and uh, we click T-Wave. No matter what T-Wave breaks, we always have to click T-Wave because he has two potential Lum DD Dragons right now. And um, yeah, we'll go for a spike as he's gonna forfeit. Thunder Wave still putting in the finest of work. So every single play I made, I made for a reason. Because let's say he, if he Dragon ends up with Hacks Wrist, I lost 100%. I 100% lost the game. This guy's a Mammoth Swine as well. Um, I think it's more Life Orb than anything else. I want to lead off with Beedrill because I can U-turn it out of there versus his Mammoth Swine. Beedrill actually puts in some work versus his team. He does lead off with that Mammoth Swine. Um, Beedrill puts in work and I don't want to risk it, but at the same time, if he gets a Brox, I'm in a bad position. Let's risk it. Yeah, so he gets a Brox. Nice. So we're able to break the Mammoth Swine Sash and... Uh, what I can do is go right out into Starmie and actually just rapid spin right off the bat. Uh, though Starmie threatens him, um, i rather just have no rocks on the field. Yeah. As he goes right for Earthquake and is able to knock me out. However, however, show me your Kirin Black switchings. Look at his Ice Beam Resist. I mean, he has an Ice Beam Resist. It's Magna Zone. I'm actually going to go for Earth Power just in case he randomly decides to go Magna Zone right here. <laughs> That'd be actually great um, if he went Magna Zone. I think he's going to go Conk. Conk is probably his best play. I would go Conk if I was my opponent. My Tornadus wins the game, by the way, guys. Um, it straight up outspeeds everything. I need to get rid of Ma uh, Mammal Swine, though. Earth Power does knock out that thing. He does go Conk. Good play, good play all around. Uh, definitely, he can Ice Punch. He's AV, though, so we know that. So he can go for Ice Punch right here if he wants to. He can also double back out on the Mammal Swine, which is a play I can't prevent. Yeah, this is a play I can't prevent, so I'm going out into my uh, Guard Chomp on his knockoff, and... Do we go for Earthquake? I think we get up Rocks. Yeah. We take the Ice Punch so he wears himself down. And then what we do is... We got to Beedrill. And we click Poison Jab because it knocks out everything on his team. Beedrill just wins, guys. <laughs> Beedrill actually wins. You can't switch into anything right now. Uh, poison Jab knocks out Conk. He knocks out Mammal Swine after Stealth Rock damage, 100%. Mach Punch isn't going to do too much. He does go Mammal Swine, so that's great. So no Rocks for you. Um, obviously, we are scared of the the pincer. We're obviously scared of the pincer, but there's nothing we can do about that. Um, if he goes pincer, I have to go Klefki. Actually, no. If he goes pincer, I'm going Kirim. Kirim is the best play if he goes pincer. Why? Because it prevents him from SDing up twice, and then I just go I just go Tornadus. So if he goes for SD right here, trying to be a bit you know, aggressive, we go cure him anyway. I don't want to go into my um, clef key because I don't want him going for the, I don't want him going for the SD on me and then potentially winning. So I'd rather go cure him right now. As he goes right for faint. Um, okay, that's fine. And I can just go right for ice beam right here. <laughs> Doesn't have a switch into ice beam at all. Close comment, will be able to knock me out. However, however, we now go out into our tornado. Why does this thing actually have to hit? That's so annoying. We do have taunt though to prevent defog, which is nice. Um, unfortunately, we have to hit. I actually want to go for knockoff, to be honest, but let's just hit. We'll hit. So thankfully, we do connect with that. I actually don't know if superpower knocks out the magnezone after that, because well, I don't know at all if superpower knocks out magnezone. That's annoying. We'll go keys right here and get up a... Uh, not that spikes matter, but we'll go keys. Um, because we need damage <laughs> to win this game. I really didn't think Superpower knocked him out. He goes Lottie, so... Um, heal block doesn't prevent anything. I'll just go for Thunder Wave on his, uh, on his Defog. Regardless, I have to hit Hurricanes to win this game, so... That's completely fine. And I can just go for Spike right now and wear down the Magna Zone, I think. That's the only play. I have to hit a Hurricane in order to win this game, yeah. That's how I'm winning this game. I have to hit my Hurricane versus Pinsir, so I'm not too worried about that. Thunder Wave doing what it does best, and we'll be able to weaken his Lottie to put in range of knockoff, um, no matter what. doesn't matter if he gets off his attacks, I guess. Maybe it does, I don't know. If he goes Magnezone right here, then we 100% put it in range of superpower. I could have calced it, but I was really... I didn't want to. Definitely didn't want to calc it, so... What we are going to do is just go for a spike again. I, I, we, I, no matter what, I'll get up a spike. Like, even if he goes Magna Zone and traps me, I'll get up spikes. So, I don't really mind. 
I'm actually surprised he's not going Magnazone now and trapping me. And no matter what, I have to hit my Hurricanes with Tornadoes if I want to win this game. That's literally how I win this game. So, and that's the only way I win this game. So that's how I'm doing it. Uh, because Beedrill does die to Feint Attack, which actually goes through Protect. It's also faster than Talonflame's Brave Bear, which is why he had Feint Attack over Quick Attack. But the good thing is, because he has Feint Attack, it's weaker than Quick Attack. So even with a crit, he can't beat my Tornadoes when it's at 50%. So that's one of the best things right there. Azia's going to go for Psy Shock. Gets a crit, but his own life or damage is going to start wearing him down soon enough. I don't know why he's doing this, because he has to go to... <laughs> he has to go out into, like, Mana Zone to Revenge Kill Me anyway. So, I get my own Revenge crit right there, as he is going to go for his own Psy Shock. That's nice, because now he is in range of the... Um, now he's in range of the Flash Cannon, so no longer will you switch in. As Hazards are really nice, because it also means that Conk will go down to Knock Off after a few hits. Depending, though. Depending. I'm faster than Kong, so at least I can get off Flash Cannon on that. He goes Magnazone, which is, you know, what he had to do. <laughs> As uh, I can just go right for a spike. As he is going to go for the Hidden Power Fire, surprisingly. Enough. Yeah, really surprised he went for the Hidden Power Fire, but we can get up to three layers of spike. And not that it necessarily matters, it's a pincer that I'm more so worried about. As I can now go out into my Tornadus, and Super Power should be able to knock him out at that range of HP. Even if it doesn't, uh, well, I mean, he's locked in HP fire, but I mean, it should be able to knock it out. <laughs> Definitely should. We're faster than the Scarf. Conk is going to go down, um, but that doesn't matter. Even at minus one, I'm pretty sure I do knock out the, uh, I'm pretty sure I do knock out the Magnazone after three layers of hazards. So I think it comes down to still having to hit Hurricane versus zone. Pretty sure minus one does that much. I'm Life Orb. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Turn his T. I'm definitely not that much attack. It's like 40. It's even less. It's it's like 16. Yep. Let's see. Superpower. Uh, Magnazone. Only Choice Car. Superpower does at minus one attack. 48 to 30. Let's give him uh, max HP, 39 to 46. Yes, we do kill. Nice. Good boy, my friend. Ah, so I couldn't switch out to Beedrill there because I had to go for Drill Run and then I risk him SDing up. And then I also risk... I just have to hit Hurricane in order to win. Yeah, we're minus two defense. I have to hit Hurricane in order to win this. Mega Pincer. Oh, you Swords Dance. Plus two... Faint? Well, plus two faint with the drops, obviously, is gonna knock me out, but ne neutral faint? Nope. So, Superior is gonna come out. Now, the thing is, uh, how much does my poison jab do to Pinsir? Plus two faint doesn't knock me out. Okay, so my best play is going out to Beedrill. Even if he goes for Glare, I U turn out. Goes right for Dragon Pulse, that's fine. He can't switch into Pinsir right now. I mean, he could, but like that puts him in range of knockoff. So, even if Pinsir SDs up, which it has to if it wants to win, or at least go off a Hurricane Dodge, I win the game. So I think I win the game no matter what, right here. Because if he does SD up, then that's actually a choke, and then I get to go for the knockoff and knock him out after Poison Jab. So he has to go for Faint right here. <laughs> a choke on my part would be going for Poison Jab. Uh, he goes for the SD. That's not going to help him, because plus two Faint is not going to be able to knock out um, my Tornadoes from full. I'm definitely going for Poison Jab again, as he's able to knock me out with the Faint. And what I can do now is just go right out into my Tornadoes and click Knock Off at that range. Life Orb Knock Off will be able to knock him out. Even if he crits me, he can't knock me out. What the hell? He can knock me out with Adam and Crit? Are you kidding me? And of course he gets it too. So I didn't calc Adam and Crit. What the? That wasn't Adam. So Adam and does 64 to 76. I got minus two defenses right here. I guess I'm hasty nature. Maybe I'm hasty as well. But even then, he literally. I still won the game unless he got that crit. And then he got the crit last turn. <laughs> Of course. Of course. But that's Pokemon for you. There's nothing I could do. He literally couldn't have won without that last turn crit, and then he got it. Now, this guy gets 6-0'd by my Kyurem lead, so I'm leading off with it. Leads off with his Slow King. I will Fusion Bolt you to hell and back. Goodbye. <laughs> 
I still can't believe that dude got a crit on the final turn where I set it up 100%. Well, not 100% there, one, obviously. Um, it goes Fortress. I do have the HP Fire. I also do have Terra Volt, so that goes through Sturdy as that will go down. So no hazards this game, unless, you know, potentially rocked. And at the end of the day, we can still lose to Clefable because Clefable's nasty. So, no, we can't. Um, best play is going on to Klefki. And, hmm... I want to get a spike just for Tangrowth. I don't necessarily need a spike. I could also Thunder Wave, but I don't want him going. He's going to go Landers anyway. I'm just going to Flash Cannon, actually. As he forfeits. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, let's get another one. We're about to be at 26 minutes, so I think this will more than likely be... Well, it depends how long this battle takes, but I'm going to keep this around 30 minutes, half an hour, so... Great. We get Stall, and we are very, very weak to Stall. So... But he's also weak to life or tornadoes, like literally turn one. He has zap though still. I think we just lose to this team. <sighs> because Chansey. Well maybe Beedrill can put in some work with hazards up, but then he has Mag he has Skarmory, which is why a lot of Beedrill teams love to pair with Magnazone, but that is not the case in this game, obviously. So we're leading off a torn and we have to click Hurricane versus Sableye. Uh, the reason I'm leading off a torn over Beedrill is because he's just gonna stay in regular form and go for Willow Wisp anyway. Imagine that was T-Spike's Beedra though, that'd be clutch. But we lead off a Tornado, so we lead off a Sableye. And what I can do is just go for Hurricane right off the bat. I could also knock off if I wanted to, but he's just going to Mega Evolve and burn me anyway. So, why is this called the Disruptor? <laughs> ah, nice. No, I would have preferred mine hitting because I'm Life Orb and him missing on Fort. Fort indeed, but we're, he did miss a will so we pretty much canceled out turn there. I mean, all I did was stall out one turn of will It's great. But me hitting him in regular form would have been huge because regular Sableye is nowhere near as bulky as Mega Sableye. Nowhere near as bulky. He does Mega Evolve though. And, uh, ooh, that's damage. 53% as he goes for knockoff. We're going for the confusion though. Like, what else can we do? This is stall. This is how I'm breaking this team. We're going for this. And that's why Mega Pidgeot was banned from Yu Yu. Right there. And. <laughs> Straight up though, that's why Mega Pidgeot was banned from Yu Yu. Um, he goes out into Zapdos. Ooh, don't have a good switching for this, do I? I can go out into my Garchomp. I don't think they run HP Ice. He goes for Thunder Wave though. Yeah, I'll be able to get up my Stealth Rock right here as he does actually have HP Ice. Okay. But what I can do now is go out into. I think Kirim? I go Kirim. Oh, as he goes Skarmory, so that's even better for me. And I get to click Fusion Bolt right now best play all around um, because it hits Chansey the hardest I would love if you actually sack your Skarmory like I would 100% love if this stall player decided to sack half his team that would be sick but he goes Chansey unfortunate as that takes absolutely nothing oh my god but I can go out to Klefki on his Thunder Wave and actually go for Heal Block and keep him low I think if he doesn't go for Soft Blood right off the bat he does choose to though unfortunately um I'm gonna put a spike right here on his Thunder Wave, and I really want to go Tornadus to be honest. But I think our own Thunder Wave is the best play because I can get up hazards anyway, and I'm gonna go out to cure him on his Defog. I could have went out to Tornadus and went for Todd, but I think I don't have to be super patient. I, I have infinite spikes versus him basically, so I don't have to be so aggressive as he goes right for that. And uh, what I can do is just go right out to my Skarmory, uh, go out to my Garchomp right now. And get up my rocks on his Chansey switch. If he goes for Seismic Toss, then he knocks me out. But whatever. I get up my rocks, which is the important part. And then Taunt Tornadus puts in so much work. Especially because Life Orb isn't bringing me down either. Ooh. So, he obviously went Chansey right there. That's what he had to do. Uh, with him being Thunder Wave, though, he does have Heal Bell support on either Chansey or... Apparently, he has it on this. I'm at 116, so he can't even knock me out. That's great. I can go for Dragon Tail right now. And force him to take all this... Mmm! Yummy! Take all that extra damage. I love it. As Zapdos is gonna come out, and uh, what I will do is just Dragon Tail him out. Goes right for HP Ice. I get to bring out my. I get to bring out Kirim and get, I kill something, straight up. So that's perfect. I go Kirim right now, and I literally kill something by Ice Beam because Chansey goes down to Ice Beam with a Fusion Bolt. Silent Toe is two KO'd. Physically defense Underwear Clefable is two KO'd. Skarmory is easily two KO'd or Oko depending on if it's physically defensive or not. So, again. This Kurum, the Punisher, is punishing. Uh, God, why? Jam that MV Chimpak, get out of my head. 
<laughs> but straight up, something is dying today. So again, Underwear of Fable is easily 2 a KO'd. Well, not too easily. Well, it's easily 2 a KO'd when we freeze it. Ah, shots to A-Drive. Big shots to A-Drive right here. Love that guy. Really do. We take those two. Watch me get the roll anyway. I would have swapped if we didn't uh, knock him out. Um, if we didn't 2-a-ko, but he goes Seismitoad actually, but that's going to be 2-a-ko'd as well. So he decides to sack half his team, which I'm okay with. I definitely am. I guess he was scouting for Iron Head as well. I think Fusion Bolt... No, Ice King did 46, so he's... He has definitely has some special defense on that. Ice Beam did 46. I'm light for him. So we can knock out Kiram, um, excuse me, Sizem Toad. So we prevent his rocks as well. And um, I think at this point, I do not risk. I think I go Klefki if he goes out into Chansey. Oh, wait, as he obviously goes out to Chansey. I go Klefki because I prevent the uh, soft boil. He, if he goes for T-Wave, Klefki is the best play. Well, it would have been the best play if he went for T-Wave, obviously. So I can just go for a spike right here on his aromatherapy. And uh, I want to keep a rocks, but that's not going to happen in this game. I want to double as well right now, but he's probably just going to go for Thunder Wave of his own. So he goes for Seismic Toss. That's completely fine. I'm just going to go for T-Wave again on this Chansey wearing it down. Skarmory comes out and uh, what I can do is go out to Tornadus because even if he gets off the defog, if he doesn't, if he gets full parrot then great. I taunt him and I prevent the defog and then I can go for knockoff from there. If he doesn't get full parrot then I go for knockoff anyway so it doesn't make a difference. So he doesn't get full parrot but I can go for knockoff right here and get rid of um, something's item right now. Uh, Clefable, if that comes out, that'll be 2 a KO'd by knockoff plus Hurricane, you know, providing I hit. But obviously, I can just taunt it as well, which is the greatness of this set. The set breaks stall in itself. Love it. He also, if I keep Chansey low, he can't switch into analytic attacks at all. So, go Zapdos as I get the static. Ooh, okay. That's terrible. <laughs> That's actually really bad. Don't know why I'm excited about that. Terrible. We're going to go Klefki because I don't want to get any Thunder Wave. He goes for Thunderbolt. Yeah, we can just get up a spike. I need to keep Chansey at bay. Even after all this hacks, I might still lose because of that static. <laughs> That's bad. So, you go Skarmory. Um, we have to... I think we have to go into our uh, Starmie right now on his attack, and I think I have to predict this Chansey and go for Analytic Psychic, Psyshock, excuse me. So he finally gets full para, which is great. Um, we're going to attempt to go for Psyshock right here on the incoming Chansey as we do catch that. Life Orb, Analytic Psyshock, absolutely nothing, guys. Remember when that was damaged? I don't either. So um, hopefully he swaps out or doesn't <laughs> expect it to, it doesn't kill, so I already know it doesn't. I kind of want to get my... Vigil Thunder Wave too. Why would I say that? <laughs> no, best play is going out into Tornadus. On his Thunder Wave. Nice. So he prevents him from uh, healing right now. And then Kieran Black just wins the game. So I like that. I'll take that a lot. So we'll go for knockoff right here no matter what he wants to do. Because um, Kieran Black just wins at this point. Prevented him from healing. How much did Fusion Bolt do before? Did I ever use it? The 34% with a life orb. Good lord. Absolutely nothing. And, uh... I think in order to prevent him from going Chansey, I, I want to go out into... my Starmie to prevent him from doubling. Uh, or as he actually goes for the Roost, that's fine as well. Um, we could just fire off an Ice Beam at this point. It's just to do damage to him. And let him knock us out. And then actually, if he if he chooses the Thunder Wave, I get off Analytic Ice Beams as well. So that is, ooh, that's damage. Damage is damage, boy. And now I get to get off an Analytic uh, Boosted uh, Hydro Pump. As we miss, unfortunate. I'm just going to go for Analytic Boosted Psy Shocks now because I don't want Chansey coming in or him trying to be cheeky and go Chansey. With the spike up, Kieran Black pretty much destroys him. So, nice. My friend gets to come out now. The Punisher. Such a fitting nickname. 
Literally kills everything too. Love it. Goodbye, Zapdos. I did not enjoy you. <laughs> we just gotta worry about his Skarmory, but if he goes Skarmory now, then I get to, uh... Fusion Bolt is better than going for Ice Beam because they tend to run specially defensive. Be especially because he has si he has Seismitoad and uh, Zapdos to deal with um, Scizors and Bishrap, so I expect him to be physically... He's gonna get full parrot anyway, so who cares? <laughs> Lin Sane. Um, but at this point, I just go for Fusion Bolt again. He doesn't have a switch in. Uh, if he goes Chansey, it's 2 KO'd. Actually, I have no reason not to go for Ice Beam because Ice Beam hits everything anyway. Like Chansey loses the Ice Beam plus thing. And once Chansey comes out, it doesn't even make a difference because I have knockoff and then my Beezer just wins by clicking Poison Jab. So I would literally win this game right now. As he goes out to Clef, that will be 2 KO'd by the Ice Beam. It's actually very smart of him to go cleft because he is not allowing me to um, he is not allowing my my B draw to sweep him. So I definitely uh, get that play. Skarmory Thunder Wave. It is Thunder Wave, so I can go out into my Tornadus on his T Wave. Great. And at this point I can just go right for knockoff. Knockoff is my best play. Knock off, uh, because I can taunt the Skarmory anyway, and prevent it from roosting. And if he stays in with Chansey, then we knock off his Violite, obviously. So, let's see if we get the Skarmory upon switching as we get full Parrot, unfortunately. However, let's try and get off this taunt. Hopefully, we don't get full Parrot right now. Nice, we do get it off. As, um, we can now go for Knock Off once more. Ah, they call him the Disruptor. Shout out to Jamvet. This team would have won. I mean, I definitely got really lucky in this game. Not that I won yet. Because it's Pokemon, so paras can happen, and they do, as you see. Um, actually, if I got full para, no, no, because I can just go clef key, and I can click heal block and things like that. So he goes Chansey, allows me to knock him off. Nice. We'll take that. Hmm. I just go for Super Power. Why would I not go for Super Power? I knocked him off. Ooh, that did damage, boy. Not enough though. I'm actually just gonna go B drill. Even if he thunderwaves me, I get off uh, a, U -turn, a slow U-turn after that, so I don't mind that too much. As he goes for soft bolt, and what we can do is go right for the U-turn right now. Again, um, I get to go out into my Kirin Black now and win the game. So, because uh, Chansey without a Violet is 2 KO'd by two Fusion Bolts. I obviously have enough to knock him out, so I'm going right for the Fusion Bolt right here. It knocks out Skarmory, and uh, it also does 2 KO Chansey. As I said, it's 100% accurate. And like I said, it, like I said, it does 2 KO Chansey um, because I did knock off its Violet, so it's less bulky right now. So you'll see. Yep, easily 2 KO'd by this. We do not miss because it is 100% accurate. Ah, and uh, the stall team will be taken down by the Punisher. And the Punisher had enough of this stall crap on the ladder. So, <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I have nothing against stall. I think it's a very viable, um, it's a, a style, it's a very viable style. And if you're annoyed by it, you know, just learn to deal with it. Use stall breakers, taunt tornadoes, confuse them and hacks them to death. Those are all great ways of beating it. But uh, in any case, guys, all jokes aside, I hope you all enjoyed. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, do your thing. And I will see you guys next time. Cue the outro.